Tegus and monitor lizards are some of the absolute largest lizards alive today. They're both fairly popular pets, they're rather intelligent weaponized animals, and they can have infamously spicy attitudes, but what separates a tegu from a monitor lizard? Well for starters, one you'll see later, while the other one you see in a while. Wait, no that's something else. Tegus and monitor lizards are both very popular as pets, and I mean, for good reason. They're very intelligent, they're very fun to work with. You can form a relationship with this reptile on a level that you can't with a snake or a tortoise, but on the flip side of that, they also can make very terrible pets for many people. I get asked at a lot of my education programs if Norman, my black and white tegu here, is a Komodo dragon. And very obviously, this is not a Komodo dragon, but a lot of people don't know that. They outwardly look very kind of similar. So I thought I'd make a video today talking about the differences between tegus and monitor lizards. But first off, I want to talk about some of the similarities they have in common. For starters, they're both very large lizards. With the largest tegu species, the male is able to hit four and a half feet in length, 20 to 30 pounds in weight. And with monitors, there's actually several species that can hit this size. You got Nile monitors, lace monitors, croc monitors, with the Komodo dragon obviously being the largest one. They both have this sort of primordial gait to them as they walk and they shift their weight and legs. So they also have these really long, strong tails for tail whipping, strong arms and long claws for burrowing, and a long forked tongue paired with a Jacobson's organ that helps them smell the air, I guess you could say, looking for food. They fill similar ecological niches in the wild and they're a great example of convergent evolution, where you have two unrelated, independent groups of animals evolved to have the same traits or features. Think birds and bats both flying or dolphins and sharks both swimming. Now for the differences, let's start with where they're found. Monitor lizards are old world, so that's Africa, Asia, Australia, and then tegus are new world, so that's South and Central America. So if you're walking through the bush in Australia and you see a giant black lizard, that's going to be a monitor lizard. Whereas if you're walking through the rainforest in South America, that's going to be a tegu. Taxonomically, monitor lizards and tegus both come from the order Squamata, which is where all snakes and lizards are found. Monitor lizards form the family Veranidae, whereas tegus make Teidae, but there's also some species in, I'm probably going to butcher this, Gymnophthalmidae, and these include dwarf tegus, sun tegus, desert tegus, but typically when you see tegus in captivity, they're from the genus Salvatore or Tupinambus. There's also just more types of monitors. There's about 80 species in Veranidae and only 22 species in Teidae. One thing many people think is a difference are the variations of sizes, which eh, not so much. There are some really small monitor lizards out there like the Aki monitor or Pygmy monitor, but there's also some rather small tegu species out there like desert tegus and the crocodile tegu. Now saying that there are monitors out there that get bigger than even the largest tegu. So overall, the monitors do have bigger members than the tegus get. Like I said before, Nile monitor, lace monitor, Komodo dragon. So if you see a lizard that's 60 to 80 pounds and seven feet long, then yes, that's going to be a monitor lizard. And despite them filling similar ecological roles, they don't even do that the same. Monitor lizards are carnivores. They eat some type of meat, whether it's just total carnivore or specialist like an insectivore. They're going to be eating bugs, birds, reptiles, fish, amphibians, mammals, eggs, some type of animal protein. Tegus, on the other hand, skew way more omnivore. They do eat a lot of meat, like the monitor lizard, but they also eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and just general plant material. And this is reflected in their skulls. If you compare the skulls of different monitor species to tegu species, you'll notice a couple differences. First off, the monitor lizard skulls, they tend to be a bit sleeker, and they also are filled with all of these curved, sharp teeth. Whereas the tegu skulls, they're a bit bulkier and more rounded, and they also have a couple different types of teeth. They do have sharper teeth towards the front, but they also have these wide, kind of molar-like looking teeth towards the back and this helps with their omnivore diet whereas monitor lizards they just need the sharp spiky ones. <laughs> Further looking into the mouths and jaws of some of these lizards, not yours Norman, <laughs> researchers have found that there are actually quite a few monitor lizard species that have venom. There are venom glands present in the lower jaws of quite a few monitor lizard species like the Komodo dragon, the Parenti, and this is an evolutionary trait and weapon that monitor lizards have and tegus don't. Countering this though, tegus have some very, very powerful jaws for their size. If you look at the largest tegu species like the red or the black and white here like Norman, if you look at the corner of their head right here just behind the mouth, they have some really big hefty jowls. These are packed with muscle, allowing these jaws to slam down with a bite force of about a thousand newtons or 300 psi, putting it above large dogs like Rottweilers and German Shepherds. 
Monitor lizards, on the other hand, we haven't really done a ton of research into their different bite forces. It's believed the Komodo dragon has a bite force approximately of the same value. But again, the Komodo dragon is the world's largest lizard, like 10 feet long, has a much bigger head than this. So it's very impressive. A tegu can bite down like this. But with monitor lizards, I mean, most of their damage comes from the venom or the sharp serrated teeth. So their jaws probably don't need to be just as strong as a tegu's. Another difference is their shape and look. In captivity, the main tegu's you're going to be seeing are from the genus Salvatore, like the red and the black and white. And these guys are fairly hefty and stocky, especially compared to similar size monitors like Argus monitors or Quince monitors. You also see a good bit from the genus Tupinambus, which are like gold tegus. And even though they're not as stocky as the black and white tegus and they're smaller, they're still fairly stocky compared to similar size monitors like the Timor monitor or Aki monitors. Again, this doesn't really hold up when you get to like the really big monitors like the Komodo dragon or water monitors because they are obviously very big and beefy and stocky too. But for similar size lizards, when you're looking at tegus versus monitor lizards, the tegus tend to be the bulkier ones. Most tegus, especially the Salvatore tegus, have beaded scales. Whereas when you're petting them, you feel every individual smooth sided scale. It's like when you're touching it, you're literally feeling a tapestry of beads. Whereas monitor lizards on the other hand, they tend to be coarser hides. They range anywhere from the basketball texture of the Savannah monitor all the way to the spiked ridges of an Aki's tail. They tend to have way more variety in their textures. There are some Varanid exceptions to this, mainly the lace monitor, but also the Komodo dragon and some others to a lesser extent. They're, they do have beaded scales, but they're a bit rougher. They don't feel nearly as smooth as the tegus, and these serve as extra protection for their body. There's also a difference in how they live. The vast majority of tegus are terrestrial. They spend just about their entire life on the ground. I mean, if you look at Norman here with the stocky body, the short, strong legs, they're not really designed for climbing. There are a couple exceptions to this, such as the Cayman lizard, which spends a lot of time up in the trees and they're semi-aquatic. Monitor lizards, on the other hand, there's way more variety. There are a bunch of monitor species, both small and large, that are fully arboreal, such as the green or black tree monitors, all the way up to the crocodile monitor, arguably the longest lizard alive today. They are all right at home up in the trees. Even younger Komodo dragons are arboreal. They will climb up into the trees readily to get away from large predators, including bigger Komodo dragons. Now, while tagus, the vast majority of them can't run up into the trees, what a lot of them can do is they can actually drop off their tail and they'll regrow it back. Like you can see with Norman here. Now, it doesn't grow back quite as long or as pretty and Norman's didn't drop because he was scared to drop, unfortunately, through an infection that he had a couple of years ago. But as you can see, it does grow back and they can drop it at several points along its length. And this is something that the monitor lizards, none of them can do. One last difference I want to talk about are their perceived intelligences and personalities. Now, tegus, especially the big ones like the black and whites and the reds, they're kind of famous for being just chilled, laid back puppy dogs if you work with them a lot. And I mean, that is true to an extent. I mean, as you can see with Norman here, aside from trying to fall off the table a little bit and messing up the tablecloth and occasionally trying to climb on my head while I'm filming this video, he hasn't done anything bad. He hasn't tried to bite me, he hasn't tried to tail whip me or anything like that. Tegus can be amazing pets and they are great education animals because I could take them to shows. I trust them not to do anything. He's been pet probably by like 10,000 plus kids by this point and he's never batted an eye at any of them. That's how laid back they are. Monitor lizards on the other hand, there's a lot of monitor species, I would say probably a majority, that are kind of known for being difficult to work with, huffy, aggressive, uh, flighty, bitey, like Nile monitors, savanna monitors, croc monitors, Argus monitors. There's a ton of species. I would say, like I said, the majority of monitor species, a lot of people just associate with having nasty temperaments. And then there's also some monitors out there that people associate with being intelligent puppy dogs as well, like a big water monitor or Aki monitors. And I mean, this is true to an extent. There are certain monitor species that do tend to be easy to work with, like Aki monitors but a lot of this also comes down to captive breeding. There aren't nearly as many imported black and white or red or Colombian tegus as there are Nile monitors or Savannah monitors. See, here we go, like I was saying. And so a lot of people associate that without realizing that when you get a wild caught animal, they're automatically going to be much less trusting, much harder to work with than a captive bred animal. But it also comes down to the animal's personality. I mean, if even if you just look at Norman here versus my red tegu, Norman I could take to shows, my red tegu gets freaked out 
by traveling and by big groups. He'll walk around my house no problem, but if I take him out in front of a crowd, he automatically gets kind of scared. And this has happened for years. I've tried bringing him to a couple programs. He does fine with the smaller ones, but I mean, this is just a difference between two Salvatore Tegus are these minor personality differences. And he also doesn't sit at a table as quite as well, which is why I've used Norman the entire video. Monitor lizards, on the other hand, I mean, there are monitor lizards like water monitors and Aki monitors that have the puppy dog reputation and some, a lot of them do earn it. Like I once worked with an Aki monitor that was so chill in public, it would just fall asleep in my pocket with its head out. That was how relaxed it was. Curl up, fall asleep. I could just pull them out. Kids could pet them. No problem. But I mean, there are also Aki's out there that are going to be on the nippy side. Ones that are really darty and quick in your hands, even after years of working with them. And then with Nile monitors are a great example. Nile monitors are probably infamously the testiest, nastiest monitors monitor in captivity, but a lot of them are wild caught. But I've worked with ornate and Nile monitors before that would just chill out on my glove, would come up onto my hair and hang out. And these guys, I mean, I hadn't gotten to the point where I could take them out to public because that was at a zoo that I no longer uh, work at, but they were great monitors. My Nile monitor, on the other hand, he's a little bit of a different story. He's a work in progress, but we're getting there. So those were some differences and similarities with tegus and monitor lizards. <laughs> Um, at least the ones that I'm going to name off today. I mean, I'm sure I missed some, so you can comment down below uh, if you think I missed any ones that were huge. Norman is done with the table. Thank you, for, uh, no, thank you to our amazing patrons for supporting the channel. <laughs> <laughs> your your uh, support means a lot to me. If you'd like to do that, link will be down below. Like the video if you learned something. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we will catch you later. Come on. All right. This is the joys of filming with a tegu. Oh, 